Okay, how to shoot manually. This is where we try and draw all the strings together and make a nice package. Don't get overawed with all the things that you've heard so far. This is where it actually becomes quite simple. All I need you to do is understand that there are three things that really matter. One is shutter speed, the other one is aperture, and then you balance shutter speed and aperture with the ISO. And the ISO, think of ISO as turning up the brightness level. So you need to determine what you want in your photo. And the whole idea of shooting manually is to think, what do I want? Do I want shallow depth of field where only my subject's in focus and everything else is blurry? Do I want intermediate depth of field or do I want the whole thing in focus? Or you could think with shutter speed, is that more important? I need a really fast shutter speed or a really slow shutter speed or it doesn't matter. With those two, shutter speed and aperture, once you've determined what you're chasing, what's important for this particular photo that you're about to take, make your settings and then use the ISO as your final setting to make it look nice. I'll show you what I mean. This photo of the swimmer, it was a really fast shutter speed. I needed a fast shutter speed, so I determined before I took the photo, I need a fast shutter speed. I then thought, well, I don't need everything in focus. I'm gonna bring my aperture right down to let's say F4, that'll be fine. And then I'll balance now with the ISO to find out how bright it is in this pool environment to get away with this shot so it looks nice. I did do a practice shot and then I look at the back of my camera and I think, yes, this is good. So I wound up with a shutter speed of 2,000th of a second. I probably could have come a little bit less, maybe even a thousandth or 1500, but because I knew the subject was coming straight at me, I chose 2000 and I'm happy with the result. Another photo where you could use a really slow shutter speed would be a nighttime photo where your camera's on a tripod and you're taking photos of the stars. You'd need a slow shutter speed. Now how slow can you go? If you shoot at a really long exposure, you can get some interesting effects especially if you're using a flash. So if you've got a flash on top of your camera, uh, you can paint with a flash. So if I turn this flash on, I can fire this flash off. I can then have pictures of something in the background. It could be stars, it could be trees, it could be somebody's house. It doesn't really matter what it is. It could be a beach scene. And then if I've got people there, I can hit them with flash. If my camera's on a tripod, the flash will hit them. And I can paint trees with the flash and just point it around to what I want. So what I've got here in shooting manually is I can choose the shutter speed. If I need it to be fast or if I need it to be slow, I'll determine that. I won't let the camera determine that. If I need a shallow depth of field or a deep depth of field, I'll determine that. I won't let the camera determine that. And if I need to balance my ISO, well then I'll go into my ISO settings and I can move those up and down to balance the photo. Because the key here out of all of this is the meter. And on my meter, I need my meter to be in the halfway mark. I can't have it too dark, I can't have it too bright. So you have to get to understand your meter and how it works. So if you go into, let's say, spot metering and you trust it, and you trust it because you've experimented with that, so you take a photo of something that you believe should look right, spot meter, and it's in the middle, yes, that looks good, and you have a look, and then let's say download it to your computer, and it does look like what the original looked like, well then you can trust your meter. So find out where your zero is on your meter, and then trust that, and then run with that. So if you're spot metering, and you spot meter someone's forehead, and you get your meter set to where your zero is and take the photo, it will look like that. It doesn't matter about the background, it'll look like that. So that's important. So the metering balances everything up. So we use our ISO to balance. You can use your aperture to balance if it doesn't matter what depth of field. You can use your shutter speed to balance if it doesn't matter what shutter speed. But invariably, over years of experience, it just makes sense to use the ISO as your balancing point. So choose your aperture, choose your shutter speed, 
and then balance your meter with your ISO. With shutter speed and lenses, there's something you need to know. You should have a shutter speed that reflects your lens. So if you have a wide angle lens, let's say a 20 millimeter lens, you can shoot at 30th of a second, if you try and stay nice and still that is. A 50 millimeter lens, you can shoot at 60th of a second. If you shoot with a 200 millimeter lens, you should at least shoot at 200th of a second or maybe 250th of a second. But try not to go below that. Now I know they've got vibration reduction systems in cameras and in lenses nowadays and they work really well. But as a rule of thumb, if you stick to that, either equal or surpass what your lens is, you'll stop camera shake and you don't want that. But also think about the action that you're taking. I shoot people at lecterns quite often and I'll use a 200 millimeter lens to do that. I could get away with being really careful and really still and using vibration reduction and I could shoot that lectern and get it at 30th of a second. But what's the point? The person who's at the lectern, who's moving, and as they're talking to the room one side to the other, making hand gestures, at 30th of a second with a 200 millimeter lens, they're going to be a blur. So there's no point, it's a wasted shot. I need to freeze the action. I need to freeze the action. And I know that's what my client is asking for, to freeze the action there. So I'll want a faster shutter speed. So I'll shoot a lectern at, let's say, 250th of a second. I'll then think, okay, what aperture am I gonna use here? I want about an F4. If it was on 2.8, it's very hard just to get their eye and they may move backwards and forwards. Oh, okay, I'll shoot at f4, at 250th of a second. Now, to make the shot work, no matter what the lighting is in the room, I balance to that lighting. So I say, okay, I look at my ISO, and I look at my meter, and I bring it up to where it's zero on their forehead, and I take a photo, and I look at it. I think, yes, this is good, I'm happy with this. I'm happy with the exposure reading. I'll even look at my histogram to see if the image looks presentable. On a histogram, when it goes too far to the right, it's blown out. Too far to the left, it's very black. It can be deceiving, and this is for a, a later stage on how to use a histogram prop. And then the other tip that I've got, and I get this all the time with people who are just starting out, is please delete. No one wants to see all of your photos, including the bad ones. They only want to see your hero photos. Actually delete the bad ones, get rid of them. Either get rid of them as you're shooting or get rid of them in post-production, but dump them. Don't let anyone ever, ever, ever see your bad stuff. No one wants to see it. And you can have two photographers and they're both as good as each other, let's say. Their work is both, okay, you take some really nice photos. You take a lot of bad ones too. But if they show only the good ones, people go, geez, you're good. And if they show everything, people go, oh, you take the occasional good one, mate. See what I mean? So don't let anyone ever see your bad stuff. I take bad photos. Every photographer you've ever met, no matter how professional they are, they take bad photos. It's a path of the course because we want to see what happens. So you look at it and think, hmm, wonder what happens if I do this. Nah, I don't like that. I'll change it and then they'll take the photo. Experiment, play with it, file them properly, dump the baddies. No one wants to see your bad shots. I told that to one photographer who I know personally who would just show endless photos. And then after I gave him that advice, he only showed his good photos and then everyone thought he was a genius. They go, wow, you've improved. Look at your photos, they're fantastic. He's still the same guy, still the same photographer, but he just only shows his best work and it makes all the difference. So you do that as well. And good luck. And if you would like to continue, uh, please press the like button and these subscribe buttons and bells and all sorts of things. And I'll see you at the next tutorial, which is the enthusiast tutorial. And the enthusiast tutorial, we're going to go into another level. So I've taken it for granted that you have uh, played with your camera to a point where you're comfortable with it. And now we're gonna go into another level. We, we're gonna talk about balancing light. We're gonna talk about flash photography more and natural light photography more. We're gonna take some portraits. We're gonna now start to open up 
as a photographer and we're going to really get some exciting practicing in action. See you then. Mm -hmm.